Dear Muslims, Allah the Exalted says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu dukhulu fi silmi kaffa. O you who have believed, enter into Islam completely with full submission. And if you noticed, Allah Azza wa Jal started His call upon us by Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you who have believed. So He addressed us as believers and then yet says, enter into Islam. See, the issue is not just to claim Islam, but to fully submit to Islam. And this is what differentiates people. This is what makes this person different than the other. It's how much I am enslaved to Allah Azza wa Jal. You see, Allah created us and jinn to worship him and fully submit to his command. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala set for us legislations that will yield benefits and fruits for us in this life and the hereafter. And he, the exalted, the almighty, knowing the nature of his creation, set certain rules that are exclusive for men based on what's suitable for them besides the general legislations that address both men and women and others that are exclusive for women and one of these legislations exclusive for women is the command of hijab. Hijab with its full definition. And I'm not just talking about the cloth, the dress they wear. See, adhering to hijab is an act of worship for which a woman is rewarded and is punished for abandoning it. It's not a custom, it's not a tradition. It's a part of their faith. It's a part of Islam, which they are commanded to fully and completely and perfectly submit to. The essence of hijab is that it is an honor for women because it is a symbol of their chastity and a sign of their faith and submission as slaves to Allah and a means of protection lest they fall prey to some evil men and lustful men You see, over the past few decades, there has been a vicious, very aggressive propaganda against Islam and particularly against women. Many people from the non-Muslims and the Muslims who stripped themselves from their faith attempted to defame Islam and depict it as a religion that suppresses freedom, that oppresses women, that deprives women from their basic rights. And they've worked day and night to try to manipulate the minds, which unfortunately they've succeeded to an extent, to manipulate the minds of some Muslim women's mind, or the minds of some Muslim women, 
and convince them that their simple right is to choose whether or not they want to reveal or conceal their beauty and adornment. They're trying to convince them that that is their right. This is their freedom. And that hijab is nothing but backwardness and strictness and suppression to the rights and freedom. You see, Islam does not deprive the woman from enjoying her femininity and acting upon it, but within boundaries. She is allowed to beautify, adorn, perfume herself in the presence of her husband, dress nicely in, in the presence of her maharim, those who are permanently forbidden from marrying her. But for her own good and protection, she's instructed and commanded to conceal that from other men. See, wearing hijab is a way of the woman saying, this is my practical expression of my freedom. I am practicing my right. You see, when someone possesses something, it's his own property. He is the only one who has the right to deal with it the way he wishes. And in Islam we add, within the boundaries of the legislations of Allah. Why is it that when a Muslim woman wants to cover up, she's looked at as an extremist, as someone who's deprived, who's suppressed, who's oppressed. But when other women, have you ever seen a picture of an Orthodox Jewish woman? She dresses head to toe in black. Nothing is shown from her. And they train and they raise their girls from young age to dress like that. So why is that the freedom of faith and the freedom of women? And when it comes to a Muslim woman, it becomes something else. It becomes something evil and negative. This is just so that women know that the arrows are all shooting towards them for no other reason but to strip them off their faith and servitude to Allah Azza wa Just like any command, any obligation, there is an evil consequence for those who do not adhere to it. Hijab and adhering to hijab according to many religious texts in the Quran and the Sunnah is an obligation, is a religious obligation. And therefore abandoning hijab has a consequence, a bad consequence with Allah Azza wa Jalla. Number one, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described a woman or the woman who does not adhere to hijab as a hypocrite. Ibn Umar Radiallahu Anhu narrated, and this is reported by Al Bayhaqi and classified as authentic by Al Albani. He said, The most evil amongst your women are those who reveal their beauty and adornment. Al-Mutabarrijat. Sharru nisa'ikum. Al-Mutabarrijat. Al-Mutakhayyilat. Wa hunna al-Munafiqat. The ones who, ex who reveal their adornment and beauty and the second type, those who are arrogant. These are the hypocrites. Subhanallah. 
Another thing, they become deserving of the curse of Allah. And you know what a curse means? You know what it means for someone to be cursed? It means that he is deprived from the mercy of Allah. See, the scholars, like Imam al-Dhahabi, when they defined the boundaries or how to recognize that a sin is one of the major grave sins, al-kaba'ir, he said, it is anything that Allah warned that there will be punishment or his wrath or his curse. The Prophet ﷺ said, as reported by Al-Tabarani, classified as authentic by Al-Albani, and narrated by Ibn Umar. He said, there will come a time at the end of time where women from my ummah will be, and he described them, kasiyatun ariyat, dressed yet naked, ala ru'usihinna ka'asnimati al-bukht, and their heads will have like the hums of the camel. You see how some of the young ladies style their hair up like a camel's hump? And then he goes on at the end of the narration, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِلْعَنُوهُنَّ فَإِنَّهُنَّ مَلْعُونَةً Curse them, for they are cursed. In another narration, he said, صِنْفَانِ مِنْ أَهْلِ النَّارِ لَمْ أَرَهُمَا there are two types of people from the dwellers of hell, which I haven't seen yet. And then he mentioned this. Another narration, which adds another consequence, that they will be deprived from paradise. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrated, and this is in the book of Imam Muslim. In another wording of the same narration, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he added, after he said, Kasiyatun Ariyat, dressed yet naked, Ma'ilatun Mumilat. They are astray and make others go astray. لا يدخلنا الجنة. They will never enter Jannah, and they will never smell its scent, and its scent can be smelt from a distance of five hundred years. Allahu Akbar. How can a woman hear all of these terrifying texts and yet not adhere to proper hijab? Another evil consequence is that they will be deserving of the punishment of Allah, a painful punishment of Allah. You see, those who do not adhere to hijab are a harmful element within the community and they spread corruption and immorality. And there's a warning against that. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, In Alladina Yuhibuna and Tashia al Fahisha to Filadina Amanu, Lahum Adabun Alimun fit Dunya wal Akhir. Those who like that immorality spreads or is publicized amongst the believers will have a painful punishment in this life and in the hereafter. Aren't these texts enough to make women and the guardians of women who see their wives or their daughters or their sisters going out without hijab? Don't they fear Allah? Aren't they scared? 
that they will stand before Allah Azza wa Jal and have absolutely no excuse other than I didn't want to pressure her. Well, I couldn't convince her. I'm sorry, brothers, but this is simply not an excuse with Allah Azza wa Jal. Hijab, we spoke about. What is hijab? What are the boundaries that make what the woman wears proper hijab? And if she's outside these boundaries, she's not adhering to proper hijab. You see, the, the, the issue is not to cover the skin with just anything. No, there are conditions that have to be met, which the scholars extracted from the Quran and the Sunnah. The first condition which a hijab must fulfill for it to be a proper hijab is that it has to cover the entire body. Starting with the head, Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, وَلْيَضْرِبْنَ بِخُمُرِهِنَّ عَلَى جِيُوبِهِنْ Talking about women. Let them draw down from their veil, from the head cover, down to their chests. I'm not going to address the issue of the face because it's an issue of a difference of opinion. I'm just going to talk about things that there is no doubt about. There is no controversy about. Right? So those who wear a scarf that exposes part of their hair or baby hair, like some say, baby hair is not like regular hair. Therefore, we can expose baby hair, but conceal and cover up the rest of the hair. I don't know where this comes from. Hair is hair, and Allah did not differentiate between the types of hair a woman has on her head. He commanded her to conceal everything from her head to, ch to her chest. And it also includes the rest of the body, when Allah addressed Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya ayyuhun nabiyu, qul li azwajika wa banatika wa nisa'i al-mu'minina yudnina alayhinna min jalabi bihin. O Prophet, tell your wives, your daughters, and the believing women to cover up themselves with an outer garment. So, so far we've covered from head down to the feet. Some sisters walk out with their feet exposed, not believing that it's part of the hijab. Meaning, they believe that if my feet show, then there is not an issue. Well, it is a major issue. It is part of hijab. The evidence of that is the narration by Ibn Umar. When uh, the Prophet ﷺ was warning men in the presence of women about isbal, drawing your garment below your ankles. Umm Salama radiallahu anha said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, what about women? He said that the garment should be to the, the, the lowest it should be just above the ankles. She said, what about us women? He said, let them draw down a hand spread. She said, our feet will still be exposed. He said, then let them draw down an arm's length and not more than that. And this is reported by Imam Ahmed and classified as authentic by Al Albani. So the first condition is that it has to be covering the entire body from head to toes completely and not showing anything. Again, we're not going to address the issue of the palms and the face because it's a matter of difference of opinion. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to enable us to 
submit to his command, this and all other commands, and make us true slaves to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم. The second condition of a proper hijab that it has to be baggy and thick. Usama ibn Zayd رضي الله عنه and this is reported by Imam Ahmad classified as sound by Al Albani. He said, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gifted me Kasani Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Qubtiyyatan. Qubtiyya is a very thin garment. So I took it and I gifted it to my wife to wear it. So a while later, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam noticed that he's not wearing it. He said, what happened to the Qubtiyya that I gave you, to that thin garment that I gave you? He said, well, I gave it as a gift to my wife. He said, then command her to wear something underneath it, another garment underneath it, because I fear that it will form her bones, meaning form her bodies and limbs, is her body and limbs. So it must be something that does not form. You see, it can be baggy, but it is so thin that it forms the body. The third condition is that it cannot be see-through. Kasiyatun ariyat, remember the narration of Sahih Muslim we mentioned in the first khutbah? Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullah alayhi commented on this saying, the one who wears a garment where people can see her skin, it's a see-through, is dressed by name, naked by essence and by reality. So again, the issue is not just to put something on. It has to be, it has to meet certain conditions. You see this that I have on my hair, on my head. Some sisters wear things thinner than that as hijab for their hair. And their neck is exposed, their hair is exposed, everything. And if you go, if a sister goes and advises her, say, I'm covered. No, you have something on, but you're not covered. As the Prophet ﷺ said, Kasiyatun Ariyat. They're dressed, but they're naked. They have something on, but it doesn't do the job. So it has to cover the entire body, has to be baggy and thick, it cannot be see through. It cannot be a, a garment or a dress that resembles men. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Bukhari, narrated by Ibn Abbas. He said, Allah cursed those women who resemble men. And resemblance here takes any form. Any form of resemblance. Dress, hairstyle, way of walking, way of talking. There are women that find it cool to talk like men, you know. Where's your femininity? Why do you want to resemble the other gender? What's the point? The next condition is that it cannot resemble the dress of the non-believers. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Abu Dawood, classified as authentic by, the, by Al-Albani, and narrated by Ibn Umar he said, Man He who resembles, who imitates a people is amongst them, meaning will be amongst them. Isn't this scary? Do we want to be with them on the day of judgment? We strive very hard not to be. So why do we at times take very short means and, and routes to be with them? It cannot be perfumed. A lot of sisters, unfortunately, would pass by you a mile away and you would still smell her perfume. Well, there's a, 
a stern warning from the Prophet sallallahu for something like this. It's reported by Abu Dawood, classified as sound by Al-Albani. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, and this is narrated by Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, any woman who perfumes herself and then walks out and passes by men and they can smell her, فَهِيَ zania. She's a woman who has committed zina. As if she has committed zina. This is scary. This is scary. Why put yourself in this class, in this category of people? In another narration, the Prophet ﷺ said, any woman who perfumes herself may not leave her house until she performs ghusl. And then leave the house. To perform ghusl, to get rid, <coughs> to get rid of the smell of the perfume. And finally, it cannot be an adornment in itself. You see some, some young ladies and some sisters, unfortunately, as well, so it's not just young. You see them wearing what they say is hijab with so many colors and designs, and this is engraved, and this is, and some shiny buttons and you notice her from a distance of a mile. See, the, the, the entire point behind the hijab is that she is not noticed. She doesn't attract the eye. Al-Alusi, rahmatullahi alayhi, commented on the saying of Allah Azza wa Jal, وَلَا يُبْدِينَ زِينَتَهُنَّ إِلَّا لِبُعُولَتِهِنَّ And they should not reveal their adornment except for their husbands. He said, Wearing a dress with multiple colors or designs on it is included in this ayah. And any man, listen to this. He said, any man who allows his woman, be it his wife, his daughter, his sister, anyone under his guardianship, anyone he will be questioned about, the man who allows her to walk out of the house in this way has no ghayrah, has no protective jealousy. You know what it means not to have protective jealousy? You know what it means to be the youth? To allow your wife or your daughter to walk out? لا يدخل الجنة the youth. He will not enter Jannah. Who allows such practices from his wife, sister, daughter, or any woman he will be questioned about in front of Allah. Therefore, fathers, husbands, brothers, uncles, be careful and beware because if you have women who do not adhere to proper hijab, you will get the share, your share of the warnings and the punishments listed by the Prophet ﷺ and by Allah. Sisters, you are a slave of Allah. So be proud of your hijab. This is your identity. So be proud of it. Regardless of how difficult it may be, do it. Never be ashamed of being a Muslim. Never be ashamed of walking out with your Muslim identity saying, I am Muslim and I am proud and I adhere to hijab. It is your right to practice your faith. 
It is your right to be enslaved only to Allah Azza wa Jal. No one can dictate anything on you and you should not allow anyone to manipulate your mind to make you do otherwise. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to preserve these precious jewels we have and protect them and help us preserve them and protect them. اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات